So today on the program, we're really pleased to welcome Dr. William McCoy, or Bill McCoy, the Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean at Eastern Nazarene College, to chat a little bit about the uh, state's new Welcome Center that has opened at DNC recently. So uh, Dr. McCoy, Bill, uh, appreciate your time today. Uh, my pleasure, Joe, and thanks for having given us the opportunity to share a little bit. Looking yeah, I thought it'd be important just to kind of uh, let the community know a little bit about what's going on on the campus at EDNC. Uh, the state did, did release some information. Apparently, this is the second welcome center uh, in Massachusetts for migrants and some folks experiencing homelessness. So if you could talk a little bit about, um, about the welcome center and how ENC came to be chosen as a home for this. Sure. Happy to do that. So uh, I, I suppose the... The basic thing to say is this wasn't exactly something you know we went out looking for. Uh, we had recognized a, a couple of years ago that we had some we had some space on our campus uh, that was underutilized, not not vacant, but uh, that we weren't we weren't using optimally. And out of the in in, in the interests of stewarding our resources to the best of our ability, um, we had been sort of out on the market, as it were. Um, looking for, you know, possible arrangements with uh, third parties, uh, other kinds of partners who might want uh, to lease or license space on campus. Um, and it was as a result of that uh, that we came into contact uh, with the state uh, and specifically with the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, and uh, they, uh, as, as you know, and as the governor uh, informed everyone, on uh, Tuesday, I guess it was this week. Uh, you know, the state is is seeing uh, some uh, significant influxes of uh, migrant populations and others uh, who are are uh, challenged in terms of shelter, and uh, so they are looking for resources and and partnerships in a variety of places. Uh, so the model uh, that uh, of the partnership that we've entered into. Uh, is kind of roughly based on a, a model that started in Brighton uh, at something called the Brazilian Workers Center, uh, uh, which is a, a welcome center for uh, sort of assessing the needs of folks who are experiencing these challenges and trying to connect them with the available resources to address their situation. Uh, so uh, ours is unique in that uh, there is the opportunity both for the operation of the Family Welcome Center, uh, which is being operated on our campus by Bay State Community Services, which is of course based right here in Quincy and has a, a long record of, of work in the area. Uh, and then the sheltering program, uh, which is in a, an adjacent building, uh, which is run by another organization called AMI uh, uh, Healthcare Expeditions. Uh, and they are a, uh, an emergency shelter operation that handles logistics in a whole variety of uh, these kinds of situations around the world, um, whether it is a, a natural disaster or, um, or a migration situation or whatever it may be, they come in and handle the, the logistics and safety concerns uh, in a situation like that. So, uh, yeah, so we have both the Welcome Center, which identifies the right people um, helps connect them with community resources, uh, and then a, a sheltering program as well, which is what they did not have at the at the Brighton Center. Okay, all right. So I'm glad you cleared that up. I wasn't I wasn't aware of the two different operations. Um, yeah. So, do the folks that go through the Welcome Center at ENC then go to housing at the emergency shelter at ENC? Not necessarily, although that's a very common outcome to these situations. Uh, so it's, it's important to emphasize that the, the shelter that's available uh, on our campus is specifically for families. Um, mostly this means mothers who are either pregnant or who have uh, young children, um, as well as uh, fathers, um, but you know, family units, children in, involved. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, so when, a, when an individual or a family arrives at the Family Welcome Center, uh, Bay State does the initial screening to determine, 
are you eligible for the sheltering program here? Or do we need to connect you to other resources? And sometimes that's an organization like Father Bill's, another uh, community organization with a long history here in Quincy. Um, and sometimes that's other resources. Uh, and so they manage, uh, they manage that process at the kind of initial screening. Um, but yes, most of the people who come uh, have been have been referred here. They're not just showing up cold. Uh, and so most of the time there's someone who's been identified as likely eligible and uh, and then they are uh, given the once we've established that eligibility, um, or I should say once base state, because we don't do the operations piece. We just we're really just providing the space. Uh, and then base state does the screening and then AMI manages the the uh, sheltering portion. I see. Okay. Uh, yes, I understand there's space available at ENC for up to 58 families. Um, why, uh, Bill, was that space available? You know, why, why isn't, why isn't ENC using it? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, uh, well, I guess, I mean, the, the simplest answer there is, uh, that, uh, the demographics of, uh, the demographics of college students um, have created a, a, a major change in enrollment patterns um, for colleges all across, uh, really, especially in the Northeast. It's especially intense in the Northeast. And so it is true we did, I mean, we the, the units that we've turned over um, were made available to students in the past, but strictly speaking, uh, we didn't have to have them. Uh, so, uh, all of the students on our campus um, who wish to live on campus will be able to be uh, housed. A few of them have obviously been disrupted a little because the housing assignment they signed up for in the spring uh, is no longer available. Uh, but they, uh, we do have housing, adequate housing for, uh, for all of these students, all of our students here on campus, and we'll be uh, glad to welcome them back here in a, in a few weeks. Has ENC ever done uh, anything like this before in terms of uh, you know, leasing out uh, available housing? We've done some much smaller scale uh, kinds of partnerships. Uh, I believe on QATV, uh, our president and the president of Quincy College a few a year and a half or two years ago, were talking about uh, a partnership that we created with Quincy College to open up a, a wing of housing for nursing students. Um, so we've explored a, a few of these options. Uh, and uh, and entered into some of those kinds of partnerships and, and generally found them to be uh, positives uh, for for everyone to for the folks that are being housed and uh, for our community as well. So did you have to make any kind of um, physical preparations uh, in your facility to to prepare for this this uh, welcome center and emergency shelter? Yeah, I mean, there was a uh, you know there were uh, some basic logistical things that needed to be done. Um, you know, the the building that is primarily being used for the kind of administrative things uh, is uh, needed to be cleared out uh, of, of some of the classroom supplies and other things that um, that we had in it. Uh, and much of that we've been able to move into storage or um, to hold for the future. The dorms needed uh, some mod some modifications. Uh, some of what we had, of course, was appropriate for use, but uh, you know we had a lot of desks in there, and that's not part of the the need in this situation. So uh, I, I a lot of credit to the Commonwealth uh, and to AMI, uh, who were great partners with us in kind of mapping out the logistics of getting all that work done, um, and were able to to get a lot done in a in a pretty short uh, pretty short period of time uh, so are, are you incorporating uh this this uh, new venture into your curriculum at ENC will 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 students and the folks who are coming to these centers interact at all yeah well they will certainly see each other on campus um and we're we're in a conversation uh with uh, Bay State Community Services and uh and AMI about what kinds of intersection would be appropriate? You know, for the most part, you know, this is a pretty this is a pretty vulnerable population of people. Right? They've many of them have traveled an enormous dif distance. Um, often, 
you know, and, and usually they're only going to be on our campus for a relatively short period of time. We're a, we're in a triage uh, center and then they move on to a more permanent kind of, uh, kind of arrangement. So we want to be absolutely respectful of uh, our family guests that are here on campus um, and don't in any way want to try to take advantage of them or turn them into a, a prop. But obviously, I mean, we are excited about what their presence here on campus uh, can mean in terms of sort of real world exposure and reflection for our students. I don't think that anybody who lives in Massachusetts would disagree that, you know, two big issues that we face and, and that are relevant in this world are questions around immigration and questions around housing. Uh, and this will be a great opportunity for us to be having, you know, uh, conversations uh, around what this, you know, what the situation is that has created this need um, and, and how it intersects uh, with, with our world. Uh, we also, you know, as a, as a Christian college and as a, as a coming from a, a tradition, you know, that was really founded by people who were uh, actively investing in, you know, addressing the kind of social needs of their time. Uh, we see this as, as a, a way of kind of living into our historic and, and kind of missional identity um, and, and hope that, that our students will, will see this as an opportunity uh, to grow in their faith and in their understanding of, um, of what we're called to do and to be in this world. And uh, to some extent, and again, we're still working out um, what's appropriate, what makes sense, um, you know, looking for opportunities for potential internships, volunteer opportunities, donation drives, you know, whatever, whatever that makes sense. Um, and so we've we've got a team of people here on campus who are working on that front and helping us figure out uh, what's going to make sense. Yeah. Are, are, um, do you know our other Nazarene colleges around the country uh, doing similar things? I'm not aware of any similar initiatives uh, at any of the other uh, Nazarene institutions. No. Is uh, is language a barrier, Bill? Uh, I know a lot of folks uh, who are coming are, are speaking Haitian Creole. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the this is one of the things that we're navigating in in terms of how this plays out in our community life. Yeah, the the family guests staying on our campus uh, at this juncture primarily uh, speak Haitian Creole, um, and uh, the majority of us here on campus do not. We do have uh, some Haitian students and uh, some Haitian uh, or, or um, employees with. Haitian family origins. Uh, so we do have a few people who are uh, well prepared to, to interact uh, with those individuals. Um, but uh, I, I should also, I mean, I will also say uh, a lot of credit to Bay State. Uh, they've, they've done tremendous work at hiring a staff that's proficient in Haitian Creole and making sure that uh, with AMI that we've got um, appropriate cuisine that's, you know, culturally uh, familiar to them. And uh, I've really been impressed with the, with the good work that I've, I've heard about from them and, and their care for these people. Sure. Uh, and another uh, question I hear from folks is, will the people who live around ENC um, be impacted at all by, by yeah. this new initiative? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And, and certainly, uh, I've, I've fielded a few calls from from concerned neighbors, and and I understand that, right? I think that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the images, of course, that we consume in the in the media, um, and and some of what we see uh, around us in our world can can make an initiative like this seem a little a little worrisome uh, when it's it is obviously uh, in a in a neighborhood, uh, and so yeah, I mean, we don't anticipate it again. The folks who are coming here are being carefully screened. Uh, they and and are you know families with young children. Uh, they are uh, they are given a, a pretty strict uh, code of conduct um, in terms of their personal behavior and their very clear rules around that. 
Uh, and we've increased our security presence and are, are working with partnering with QPD and others to make sure that, you know, we don't have people, no one's going to be allowed to loiter or set up a tent on our baseball field or or things like that. When when people do show up who aren't eligible for our particular program, uh, uh, they will, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a plan in place to help those people find resources uh, in the in the right locations. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that, I, as you're well aware, that's that is a concern that's been brought up. I know the mayor has also mentioned trying to to establish some type of a community meeting. I guess just to inform folks. Um, have you heard anything more about that? No, I don't have any specifics on that front. Um, we're we're glad to partner with the mayor um, and and make sure that people have the information that they need. Um, but uh, yeah, glad to glad to try to be a resource. And can you explain a little bit about how uh, the public might be able to help these folks that are coming uh, to to Quincy uh, in terms of d- donations? Yeah, the the best way to do that uh, at the moment and in the immediate is uh, to reach out to Bay State Community Services, uh, and they are coordinating uh, the primary donations. As you'd expect, the the needs at the moment are for things like diapers, baby formula. Uh, and uh, and things of that ilk, uh, but uh, car seats, uh, those kinds of things. So uh, if people are are interested, I would really encourage them to contact Bay State Community Services directly, and they're maintaining a, a list of uh, what the what the current needs are. Okay, very good. I know that uh, the New Way Recovery Center over on Quincy Avenue, run by Bay State, uh, is a, one of the drop-off points for folks who yes. like to make donations. Yeah. Uh, anything else you'd like folks to know about right now about uh, the Welcome Center or the emergency shelter there? Yeah, I think I think we've covered it pretty well. Uh, I, I certainly um, understand the community's concern. I've also been really grateful. I, I should say, really been grateful for the number of people who've who've reached out uh, and expressed uh, support and interest in in partnership. That's been good to see. Um, I know this is obviously you know uh, a, a new a, a new thing here in Quincy, and uh, so that can always cause a little uncertainty, but. Um, we're we're anxious to to be good partners um, with the with the state with the city and uh, for this this operation to succeed. Yeah, I mean, as you know, the governor just declared uh, uh, the immigration situation here in Massachusetts a crisis. So we yeah, actually delayed, delayed our conversation a little bit just to see if it, yeah. that would impact your operation at all. Ha- has it? Uh, no, so far we uh, we uh, as yeah as you and I talked about uh, over email we didn't know exactly what the implications of that press conference would be but our our takeaway to this point is it's it's steady ahead uh, and looking forward to continued partnership. Okay, appreciate your time. Um, if if folks do have questions, uh, Bill, or, or, or concerns, what, what would you recommend uh, that they do to, to get those questions answered? Sure. Uh, it, of course, depends a little bit on the, the nature of the question, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, they are, of course, so, all, you know, ultimate responsibility here lies with the Massachusetts Department of Health and Human Services, um, and so, you know, they could, they could feel free to reach out to them to express uh, to express concerns. Um, if people are uh, are interested in talking specifically to, to me, uh, they are free to do that. Uh, my phone number is 617-745-3708. Okay. And is there opportunity, do you know, for volunteering uh, or assisting in some way? Yeah. Uh, not at this, uh, I, right now, the only opportunity is is donations. Uh, okay. But uh, uh, if if people are interested and looking for ways to to get more involved, we'd be glad to take their information and and try to let them know as as opportunities might emerge. Okay, great. Again, appreciate your time. Uh, really good to talk to you about this. And uh, feel free to use us here at QATV to reach out to the community uh, in the future. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate the time. 